Hello viewers, today I'm going to share some tips on how to prepare for the MRCS ENT OSCE. First off, make sure you have a solid understanding of the exam format and what to expect. MRCS ENT OSCE will only be held five more times as of recording this video. Once in October 2024, once in February 2025, once in May 2025, once in October 2025 and the last time in February 2026. MRCS ENT OSCE consists of two parts, non-manned exam and manned exam. I have made several videos talking about them on this channel but let me briefly explain again for those new to this channel. Non-manned exam in MRCS ENT OSCE is an online proctored exam. Proctored means you'll be monitored through the webcam of your own computer. You can take this exam from the comfort of your own home. All you need is a very good laptop with a webcam and reliable high-speed Wi-Fi. Hotspot will not be enough. It is not even allowed, so you need Wi-Fi. Non-manned exam is a two and a half hour exam with 20 questions. Each of these 20 questions will have many parts and each part will have a short unambiguous answer that you have to type. So you have to work on your typing skills as well. For example, you might get a CT scan picture of a right peritonsillar abscess and then various questions on peritonsillar abscess may follow. Non-manned exam accounts for 400 out of 520 marks of the MRCS ENT OSCE. So theoretically, a very good performance in the non-manned section of the exam can almost guarantee a favorable result in MRCS ENT OSCE. The syllabus of non-manned exam includes the whole of otorhinolaryngology. However, it is at the level of a beginner who is just starting specialist training. In Indian terms, we can consider it to be the level of a first-year postgraduate trainee. Most of the questions are from otology and head and neck, but questions are also asked from rhinology, pediatric otorhinolaryngology, radiology, anatomy, including histology pictures, which are quite difficult, instruments and miscellaneous topics like the drugs used in ENT in the UK, including their brand names as well. So this also requires special attention. Also, written communication like how to write intraoperative notes, how to write discharge letter, transfer letter, these things are also tested in the non-manned section of MRCS ENT OSCE. It is of utmost importance that you adhere to the guidelines while you are taking the non-manned exam. Although you are completely alone in the comfort of your own home, you should maintain complete silence in the room. You should not read the question aloud. You should not even move your lips while you are reading the question on the screen. Because the last thing you want as an examinee is to be flagged for suspicious behavior. If you are flagged for suspicious behavior, there is a possibility you may be barred from ever taking MRCS again. So be very careful about the rules. You'll find a video on this channel talking about these rules in detail. Link will be in the description below. Now we have the MAND exam. We talked about non-MAND, let's talk about MAND. MAND exam assesses not just your clinical knowledge, but also your clinical communication skills and your clinical examination skills. MAND exam needs to be taken from the exam venue, not from the comfort of your own home. In October, 2020, in October 2024, the venue will be Glasgow. February 2025 will be in London. May 2025 will be in Edinburgh. October 2025 will be in Dublin. And the last MAND exam of MRCS ENT OSCE will be in February 2026 in Glasgow. That's where even I had appeared in the MAND exam. For manned exam preparation, you need to practice communication skills like how to break bad news to a patient, how to obtain informed consent for a surgical procedure, how to explain the plan of management of a disease, or how to obtain clinical history for a particular complaint to arrive at a provisional diagnosis. You also need to practice clinical examination skills like how to perform ear examination, nose examination, flexible nasal endoscopy cranial nerve examination, etc, etc. Practice, practice, practice. Practice is the key. And if you want to practice, you should find friends 
You can set up mock OSCE stations with friends or colleagues who have ENT experience to simulate exam conditions. This will help you improve your timing and build confidence because of course these tasks need to be, need to be performed in a set period of time like seven minutes and not be allowed to look at the time while you're performing the task. So practice is of paramount importance. You should also practice active listening, empathy and clear communication skills with patients or friends playing the role of patients during your practice sessions. You'll find many useful practice videos on this channel. Link again will be in the description below. On the day of the exam, make sure you get a good night's sleep and eat a healthy breakfast. This cannot be emphasized enough. Reach the venue well ahead of time to avoid any last minute hassle or stress of locating the venue in an unfamiliar country. During the exam, stay calm, stay focused. Don't forget the basics. Remember to introduce yourself to the patient first. Explain what you are doing in simple language. Ask for consent before proceeding with any examination. Also, it's a good idea to wear clean gloves before touching the patient. After the exam, take some time to reflect on your performance. Identify areas where you did well and areas where you can improve if, God forbid, there is a next time. Hopefully, you, like me, will pass easily in your very first attempt. I had taken online coaching from Dr. Osama Salim. The course is called Don's Master Course, D-O-H-N-S Master Course. You can subscribe to it also by searching on social media. However, you should remember that I don't stand to gain financially if you subscribe to this course. This course not only helped me understand what to read, but it also helped me get in touch with various other examinees so that I could practice online with them. However, the best practice remains in person and I will soon make a video talking about how practicing in a Burger King in Glasgow for six hours straight on the day before my MAND exam made the biggest difference for me. And finally, remember to stay positive and confident throughout your preparation phase. You would not require more than three months to prepare for MRCSE and Tioski. I know it might appear to be very difficult, but trust me, it is not as tough as the exams you have already passed in your home countries. You've put in the work, now it is time to show off your skills. Good luck, you got this.